For Kentucky Republicans, it's a new way to vote for this year's presidential race, but many of them have questions about the caucus, how party leaders are trying to answer them. A man rushed to the hospital tonight after police say he was accidentally shot inside a Lexington apartment. Now, some Franklin County students who say they were bullied over social media are now trying to help other bullying victims feel better about themselves. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening to you. It is a chilly night across the bluegrass, but it looks like the end of the weekend will have much better weather than the beginning. We begin tonight with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey and your no wait weather forecast. Hey, Chris. Hey, Amber. Yeah, to get to the end of the weekend, got one more little speed bump to go over, and that is our Saturday forecast with a cold front showing up on the scene. As you mentioned, chilly evening in the books with thermometers into the low 30s into most of central and eastern Kentucky, where you have a little more cloud cover. You're actually a little warmer now than parts of the Bluegrass region. We flipped the script from earlier in the day. Got some stars showing up on top of the Lexington Metro. Defender Radar Network, nothing going on. Clearing skies out there, and while we sleep, skies will clear and then cloud right back over as the system dives in from northwest to southeast. That's a cold front out ahead of that. A little surge of some rain or snow shower action that will arrive into the first part of tomorrow. So, can we squeeze out one wet snowflake early? Yes, it's a possibility. Not a likelihood. Into the afternoon, though, it's a gusty, Day. Temperatures will be stuck in many cases mid and upper 40s. And at any point tomorrow afternoon, the skies may open up with a gusty shower that works its way on through central and eastern Kentucky. Spring pattern, though, is taking shape, Amber, and that seven day forecast will break it down for you and show you how the warm air may also bring some storms. That's at 11 11. Chris, thank you. Now to a developing story we're tracking out of Lexington tonight. Lexington police say a man was rushed to the hospital after being shot. It happened about 7.30 tonight at an apartment on Trent Boulevard near Man of War. Police say a man was cleaning his gun when it accidentally went off. They say the bullet hit his roommate. Police say they do not know his condition tonight. They say the gun owner is being cooperative, and at this point, police say he is not facing any charges. The road to the White House comes through Kentucky tomorrow. The state's Republicans will choose their candidate in a caucus. It's a different process than the primaries Kentucky voters are used to, and that's caused a bit of confusion. New tonight, Garrett Weimer talked to Fayette County's Republican chair. Party leaders say they're ready for the caucus. Some voters still have decisions to make. I'm torn between Kasich and Trump. Inside Fayette County Republican headquarters, be sure you bring an ID with you. the phone line's been busy with callers trying to figure out their caucus location. In the last few weeks, it's been very busy as awareness has been raised and people are wondering, where do I go to vote? We've been answering a lot of questions in the last week or two. Most counties have one caucus site, but some share with neighboring counties. Others have several locations. We have four because we have 80,000 Republicans in Fayette County. And... Um, Rupp Arena was booked up tomorrow. We couldn't use that. So we all have to split up into four locations. Because it's a caucus, not a regular primary, it's run by the party, not the Secretary of State and county clerks. But the clerk's office here in Fayette County says they've still been busy. Their elections department says they've gotten a lot of questions, but they have to refer callers to the Republican Party. Fayette County's GOP chair says she doesn't know how many people will caucus, but she hopes for a good turnout. And voters are ready to have their say. I believe in voting, you know, and I always have, always will. So at least my one little vote hopefully will count. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. If you are voting tomorrow, we have a link on our website, WKYT.com, to help you find your caucus location. Republicans in Kansas, Louisiana, and Maine will also vote tomorrow. GOP frontrunner Donald Trump spent the day campaigning in some of those states. He skipped the CPAC convention in Maryland, which is a major gathering of conservatives, and his opponents pounced on that decision. He really doesn't belong at a conservative gathering. Donald Trump is not a conservative. If you want to beat Donald Trump, Here's how you do it. You beat Donald Trump with the voters. Tomorrow's a big, big day. You got to get out and vote. At the CPAC convention, Ben Carson made it official that he is dropping out of the race, but he would not endorse a candidate. Rubio will address the convention tomorrow. 
As results are first released at 7 Saturday night, join WKYT political editor Bill Bryan and I for special coverage right here on WKYT. New tonight, country music singer Joey Feek has died after battling cancer for more than a year. Her husband, Rory Feek, said in a blog post tonight that Joey was surrounded by family when she died at her home in Indiana this afternoon. She was 40 years old. The couple performed as the award winning country music duo Joey and Rory. Joey sang lead while Rory sang the harmony parts of their songs. New tonight, a car crashed into an Anderson County restaurant causing some major damage. It happened at the subway in the West Park Plaza Shopping Center in Lawrenceburg. The Anderson News took these pictures. The driver told the newspaper that the brakes failed on her car as she pulled into a parking place and the car ended up inside the restaurant just inches from the front counter. No injuries were reported. They say they're the victims of social media bullying. As we first told you Monday night at 11, some students at Elkhorn Middle School in Franklin County said vulgar things have been posted about them on Instagram. But several students are using this experience to help others who've been bullied. Monique Blair has the update, new at 11. Maddie Choir and Megan Eastman, both in seventh grade at Elkhorn Middle School, say they know all too well what it feels like to be the target of cyberbullying. Me and Megan were both like on the pages, and we're like, well, since people keep putting us on the pages, why don't we do something about it? Since like nobody else would. So they created an Instagram account and named it Frankfurt Beauties. And we like made it so that like. Like the people that were being bullied so that they knew that like we cared about them, like people did care about them. Now these students say they started these Instagram accounts because they have been the victims of cyberbullying. And they say they wanted to do something that would leave a positive impact on someone's day rather than a negative one. This wasn't the only account created this week, though. Several other positive accounts have popped up, each targeted at Elkhorn Middle School and each with the same purpose. We just want people to know that we care about them. How it works is they ask for students at the school to send them positive messages about other students, and then they post those messages anonymously. We're just kind of posting them to let them know that somebody thinks they're beautiful. And although this may seem like a small step forward, Eastman's mom, Sandy, says every step counts. I'm sure it's not going to stop. By no means it's going to stop. It's always going to be going, but I think this has had a pretty big turnaround. In Frankfurt, Monique Blair, WKYT. Good for those girls. Elkhorn Elementary School will be holding a cyber safety presentation for students in all grades and parents next Thursday. We have information for you at WKYT.com. Lexington Center leaders say Rupp Arena could be warmer than usual during tomorrow's game between UK and LSU. They say the arena's HVAC system has an electrical switch gear problem and it's limiting the ability to air condition the entire arena. They say it's not a danger to the public, but they say fans should plan to dress accordingly in case the arena is warmer than usual tomorrow. Tonight, a Catholic church in Lexington is in the middle of a 24 hour prayer vigil. The Cathedral of Christ the King is holding a vigil of mercy as part of the year of mercy that Pope Francis has declared. Parishes in Fayette County have banded together to make sure priests are on hand during the entire vigil. Each hour has a different prayer theme, which will include prayers for the sick, homeless, and hungry. And organizations say everyone is welcome to stop by and pray. If somebody's Catholic, of course they're invited. If somebody's Catholic and, say, has been on a sabbatical, this is great for that kind of person. If somebody's not Catholic and just wants to come for a quiet place to pray, they're certainly invited to. The prayer vigil will conclude with a special service at 5 tomorrow afternoon.